Hey guys, welcome back to Quick Drive Review, sometimes Quick Ride Review, when we ride or drive rare, unique, one-off, and custom motorcycles and cars. And this 8 Series V12 1992 BMW is no different. This is the car, when I was 16 in the mid 90s, this is the car I wanted. It was either a 5.0 Mustang or an 8 Series BMW. And not only that, it has a rare six speed. I'm super excited to drive this car and tell you guys what it's like to experience. And I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna, <laughs> okay, I got some shenanigans happening off screen. Uh, I'm gonna call in my friend T to explain more about the history of this vehicle. Hello there, it's you and I. Ha, uh, it's much better when I have tea here with me. Aww. I'm so boring by myself, and nice. I feel like I could do an entire series on the wacky vehicles that come in and out of your garage. Good and job. this is probably one of my favorites that you've had. You by the way, straighten your microphone a little bit. It's like kind of aiming off. It is aiming off. Yeah, I gotta so aim up at you. I can't speak this way. There Sorry. you go. There you go. Okay. Oh no. Or you, yeah, or you can speak into it or whatever. Okay, I'm gonna redo that. Okay, better? There you go. Looks better. It's very flattering on that shirt. I like it. Thank kind you. Kind of plunges it down a little bit more. Appreciate um, you. So you you recently got it. You traded it. What did you trade for this thing? An E36 station wagon with an S52 swap and a six-speed. It was really cool, cool car. Yeah. That was a tough trade, but this it is tough. pretty awesome. Are you happy with the trade? I'm pretty happy because I've always wanted to own one of these cars. I've owned every single BMW out there minus this one and an E9. I have an E3, which is the four-door version of an E9. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I just wanted to hold off on buying one of these for the longest, and I wasn't gonna. I still wasn't gonna buy one, but I said, you know what? Hey, let's do it. Neo Trade. What do you think? I remember dude, you showed like, it to me, and I was it. like, dude, you have to do it. Yeah, absolutely. No, he uh, had to do it. Oh, he was more excited for the wagon oh. than I was for this one. Yeah, but you had to do it. You like showed it to me, and I'm like, oh, dude, this is the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we there's no confirmation but this is the same kind of car that prince used in one of his music videos prince was a bmw guy as May I well be. Tea. and uh we'll show a little clip it's the sexy motherfucker that's exactly what it was so i would like you to pretend i'm prince and then this is me twirling a Doing microphone sexy things <laughs> and then this is my car in the video that's literally what they do this is exactly what happens yeah, yeah, yeah. okay yeah. Um, 850, how much horsepower to this thing? I don't know, about 300 pounds. I'm mean, 300 uh, horsepower. And it's, something, it's whatever. smooth. It reminded me, I had a family member with a V12 Mercedes, an S600 yeah. that I drove. It's very and, comparable. Yeah, the sound and yeah. the feel, yeah. like the load is like, like a train, a freight train almost. Technology wise also. Yeah. But um, this will still kick its ass though. In I'm sure. every aspect. Um, and then finally, before we hop on the road, yeah. uh, we're gonna cover that he actually, so T owns an amazing upholstery shop and we often do stuff together, but he put, you put M4 seats in this car? Yes, fully functional uh, F82 M4 seats installed in here. They look incredible, um, they look amazing. They are more incredible looking than, actually they're comfortable. They're more comfortable than the way they look. I don't give a, and it's yeah, incredible. We had a, a Cars and Coffee yesterday at Brooklyn Speed, yeah. and everybody was like, holy cow, it suits this car perfectly. It does. Looks wise, actually very, very fitting. And this car was all about aerodynamics, hence the, at the time, for efficiency, uh, hence the pop-up headlights. Very polarizing car for BMW fans out there. And also, mid-90s money, you are telling me, $100,000 for this car new, which is like $300,000 in today's, uh, today's money, inflation, yeah. which is insane. Yeah, um, absolutely. I wish, in all honesty, I don't have that kind of money, but I wish BMW made a car like that today. The i8 got close, but they need something a little more with a punch and a little more soul. Anyway, are you gonna let me take this out and uh, we'll get into some shenanigans with this thing? Sure. Okay, bye. Why not? Let's go. Let's go.
<laughs> Tooks a hazard. Okay, really nice. Feels good. It's got this uh, cool, oh, there's there's no seatbelt, dude. I haven't installed it yet. And the keys, but very cool. My first eight series, scoop this, does this scoot up? Is it power seats? Let's not talk about it yet. Okay, so the seats are where they are. I think we're about the same height, so you should be all right. It's fine. <laughs> I can totally drive like this. Dude, this is, oh my God, do that. No, no, just like the gangster lean. <laughs> do I look cool? Mom, mom, do I look cool? <laughs> I look like such a dad. <laughs> wow. The engine sounds just like my... My dad's old S600 from the 90s, Mercedes V12. Okay, I keep on reaching for the seatbelt. We're not you gonna do that. We're cool guys, we don't okay. need them. Okay, so uh, one thing to note, the clutch is, oh yeah, it's light. It's very light. Wow, okay, light clutch. It's very light. Seats don't move. We have our M4 seats, they look great. The seats move. I did wire them, everything works right now, but I had to replace that one module that makes them go to sleep or not. Replace. This little guy? Don't worry about this little guy. No. Done all morning. How about that little fella? Oh, that little guy. I wouldn't worry about that little guy. No. Okay, no. here we go. Lift up. Yeah, I, I, I've i driven, this is my first manual car. Just oh kidding. My God. Oh my God. Wow, oh my it is, God. the clutch engagement's very high in the clutch, yeah. and it's super light. It's super light. Okay. It's a very easy car to drive. So Do I look cool? Remember. You look amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I keep on trying to adjust it and put my seatbelt on. Okay, there we go. So what part of town are we in? Is this considered Queens, Long Island? Uh, no, it's Queens, right? Still Queens, yeah. 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 Smooth power. And uh, interesting enough, the the gears, it's very long gears. Very. So apparently, I have not left first gear yet. I've hit maybe 20, 30 miles an hour and it still feels comfortable first this gear. It's a highway car. Yeah. It's geared to do It's a highway. GT. God, I just saw a reflection of us. So it looks cool. so cool. I love the wheels. I love the stance. Did you lower this car to come like this? Ah, uh, it's on wheel scenes. Just lower it. Okay. Turn signals work. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Steering is nice and heavy. It reminds me of uh, first gen X5 I used to drive. Oh yeah, that is true. Obviously a lot cooler than that. First gen is in like an E28 all the way back in the 80s? No, 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 no. Talk, oh, no, I'm X5 about... from like the late 90s or oh, early 2000s. Okay. Uh, just so I remember those, heavy, when BMW used to have that mechanical heavy steering feel. Where are we going, left? Make a left, sir. Okay. Okay, okay. yeah, we're gonna drive in the bike lane. Fuck it. We do what we want here. Go, go, You can go. Even though it's a red light? Cut these people, go. Okay. Who we're going. Who cares? Who cares about? Yeah. Guys, that was not a real red light, that was, uh, that was VR. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, cool. Power steering wheel adjustment, that's pretty fancy. You have to make a right. Okay, sir. we're gonna take a right. Thank you. And am I going merging to left here or? Doesn't matter, they okay. go both the same Let's way. Let's give it a little zoomies. Let's go! Still first gear, into 40 miles an hour. And now we're at 60, shifting into third. Uh, red line's at about 6,000 RPM. This is a GT car and it is just nice and heavy feeling. It feels like a V12, very heavy. Oh, definitely. Oh yeah. Feels comfy. Uh, AC is not working yet. We're gonna get to that. There's an electronical issue. It's a 90s German car. There's gonna be a little bit of electronic. Stop uh... talking shit about my car. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to say that, you know, these are the things that you potentially experience with a an older, what, didn't they have biodegradable wiring harnesses? With Not this, it was older Mercedes. Mercedes of this Mercedes generation. That you loved so much. Yes, my beloved Mercedes of the early to mid 90s. The S600. The S600, for example. Yeah. The cars of that generation, BMW and all, uh, sorry, Mercedes of all of its grand uh, vision and trying to be company of the world, created biodegradable, biodegradable um, wiring harnesses. I can't, I can't think, sorry. Yeah, yeah no. wiring harnesses. So if you have one of those cars now, it's just like a ticking time bomb. It ultimately is going to uh, fail. So you're gonna have to replace those wiring harnesses. Uh, any other unique features? Other than, this car is all style and motor. Style and motor. Um, honestly, way back when, when they actually engineered this car, they didn't care much about the, uh, the style, even mm. though it's just it's drop that gorgeous. Of course. It was efficiency, yeah. the aerodynamics, 
was massive way, you know, when they built this car. BMW spent one billion dollars. No. Uh oh. Yeah. That window doesn't work. Okay. Okay. Uh, they spent a billion on this car. They have the pop-up headlights, not for that 80s, 90s style, but really for aerodynamics. Yep. Yep. And yep. we were talking about how this was a polarizing style because it was a departure from BMW's traditional appearance mm -hmm. of the era. Yep. And it was also very expensive at uh, $100,000 for in 90s money. Absolutely. So this car, I don't think sold very well, did it? No, it didn't. Yeah. It didn't. BMW lost big monies on this. Mm -hmm. Um, I just love tinkering and... Are we going to the BQE, by the way? Yes, sir. Okay. Make it right. Yeah, you love tinkering. You have uh, Baharni, which we're going to feature in a future episode. Absolutely. Yeah. That, that's going to be awesome. I, I envy your love and your time and space to do these just crazy builds, like the Pinsgauer, for example. In the example. middle of New York City, by the way. Yeah, yeah middle yeah. of New York City. It, it, no, every car you've had, I've definitely wanted a piece of. Your X5, and again, all these cars I'm featuring, I'm gonna throw up on screen. Your X5 we is incredible. I we really love that X5. X5 too. We should yeah. actually go off-roading with it. Oh, that'd be fun. Yeah. Off-roading episode, a proper, yeah. not like the Pinsgauer, a proper off-roading episode. Absolutely. All right, let's go. And I hit 55 miles an hour, and that was in second gear. I did not redline. Yeah, we would, would have just kept going. Oh, uh, yeah. It feels, the best way to describe it is freight train. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Exotic 90s Grand, Tour, Grand Touring freight train. So I'm just chilling in second gear. It is about 1,000 under redline, and I'm just chilling in second gear on the highway, which is pretty wacky. Yep. Uh, also, I noticed the power mirrors don't work. Well, because of the seats. <laughs> It does not have the original seat. Don't seats. blame these, these adorable seats on... on... Uh, I blame myself. Um, so it's a CAN bus system. It's the first CAN bus car, basically. Yeah. So everything has to speak to each other. Yeah. If the seats don't work, your mirrors are not going to work. Your steering wheel is not going to work. A lot of other stuff, like the power dimming uh, mirror, yeah. is not going to work. There's like a... Good... I mean, it's set to dim. Yeah, but there's like a good two dozen items in this car that's not going to work just because I replaced the uh, OEM seats with these ones. And 100% worth it as far as I'm concerned. Uh, uh, side yeah. note, does the, not that I'll need it, but does the ABS work on this car? Works, everything works. Well, I mean, you have no lights on the dash, so we're good. Okay, cool. All right, let me give it a little bit of life. So yeah, guys. We're still in traffic, by the way. Yeah, I know, that's fine. I'm driving like a Nissan Altima. I'm like a Nissan Altima Uber. Yeah. So that was maybe, maybe or not uh, 80 miles an hour and only in third gear. Half of third gear. Yeah, half of third gear and we hit 80 miles an hour, maybe or maybe not. Not officially. Uh, but, but yeah, it, it's a Grand Tour, Who's long gonna gears. <laughs> Who's going to get us? Come on, we already done We're this. trained professionals. Uh, yeah. He's we, got a license. We're definitely wearing seatbelts right now. Yeah, uh, lap belts. Yeah. They're just There's not, lap belts hidden uh, underneath. Seen they're, it. they're hidden harnesses. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, steering feels nice and heavy, which I like. Yeah. Nice and smooth at speed, despite being so low. We caught the guy with the motorcycle. Yeah, we did. <laughs> well, you know, we're both motorcycle riders, so I might as well drive like one. I dare you to lane split. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go! I would love to. I always, I love my, my daily driver vehicle, but my car, but I feel, I feel awful whenever I can't lane split. Oh, I know. We're just cruising at third at 55 miles an hour. Nice and easy. Um, what would you upgrade on this car? Would you just kind of like leave it, it as wouldn't is? Be, it wouldn't be considered an upgrade, but I do want to go with an air suspension. Ooh, that'd yes. be nice. I want to lay frame, sir. If the only negative of this car driving right now, if yeah. you felt like you don't like it, that's because of the wheels. I mean, it's fine. It's It's got a little bit of roughness to it. Um, I can tell just because they're very thin, yeah. thin tires. So you're not supposed to feel anything. Driving this car, doesn't even matter if you're going over speed bumps or whatnot, at any speed. Yeah. You're not going to feel it. It's got a very sophisticated suspension system. Uh, a lot of firsts. 
too. At the time, it was what were built. some of the big firsts with this car? Um, rear steering. Oh, it has rear steering. It's, it's the first rear steering car ever made. Okay. Um, lots of things like over a hundred miles an hour. The windows will roll up automatically. I don't Not know this you, window. Well, it's off the track right now. We just dropped it. <laughs> I realized that I'm like, no, don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. We Stop. won't mention that. But if we're at speed, it would raise up automatically. Yeah, you can do that right now. It'll still, it'll still raise. It'll try to raise it up. Yeah. The time it was built, it was really hard for economics in terms of gasoline. Yeah. Gas prices were skyrocketed at the time, so having a V12 car was pretty scary for a lot of people. So they have to advertise this car as having pretty good low, uh, gas mileage, um, which is why the drag coefficiency of this car, the way it's built, is just amazing. I think it's 0.29. That's incredible. Which is better than 99% of the cars that are built right now. How cool is that? No license plates? Oh, well, that guy... Uh, he's got a sticker on his license sticker plate. On <laughs> Just a few guys having fun on their bikes. I love it. Yeah, it's funny that we're cruising the highway on third in third gear. Yeah, no, exactly. It's so quiet right now. So what's, say somebody buys a car like this today, what yeah. is it going for on average? A V12? You could pick up one for 20 grand, 25 grand, oh, honestly. Man. I don't know about the six speed, they're very rare. Yeah. I, think, I think in this- Only way to do it too. Yeah, the only definitely. Way to do it. I think in this configuration, there's like 800 of them made. Um, Sweet. So it's gonna be tough to find one, but if you do find one, definitely get one. Um, what are some of the things they need to look out for in regards to reliability? So you have to remember this, being a V12, and at the time, BMW did not create a V12 car from scratch, I mean, engine from scratch. Right. This is a two M20 engine, inline six, bolted together, basically, at the crank. It's very funny. It feels, it sounds just like the six series of the time. Yes. Yeah, said the V6, sorry. Double the that. Double, double. Yes, <laughs> yeah. double that. I was just thinking that. If you were running two M20 cars, let's say two E30s next to each other, yeah. that's probably how this car sounds like right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. That's why they didn't figure out or they didn't care for having one computer. Yeah. It has two computers, it has two fuel pumps, it has two ignition system, it has two of everything. Exactly. Is that two for cars. redundancy or is that oh to run those no, engines? To to run the both engines together basically. Crazy Literally for that. But it works as redundancy. redundancy. Yeah. You can literally lose one side of your engine and this car will still do 80 miles an hour. It'll still drive itself, no problem. So you would say overall, if somebody to buy a car like this, electronics is gonna be the major, biggest factor that you're, they're gonna face. Electronics, yes. Mechanically, I don't think mm, a lot of things could go wrong. Just some, some like quirky, gimmicky things could possibly fail, like the pop-up headlights and whatnot. Yeah. And replacements for those are going to cost you thousands of dollars, unless you can somehow MacGyver it into, you know, whatever, making them work. Yeah. But stuff like that. Otherwise, I do recommend, don't daily drive one, but definitely have one as a- Weekend car? Weekend car, a classic car that you want to own. Um, it's a very popular car, believe it or not. 99.9% .9 of people out there go, oh my God, is that an 850? So T, thank you very much for letting me take the time. Dunkin' Donuts. And uh, we're gonna get some Dunkin' Donuts. We're gonna Donuts. celebrate here with some, uh, some carbs. But yeah, thank you as always, sir. It's a pleasure. And I guess we're gonna catch you in the next quick drive or ride review, some other wacky vehicle. And if you have a vehicle somewhere in the New York City, DC or Los Angeles area that you want us to Check out, hit us a uh, like, and if you like this hat, that hat. Excellent. This is also his hat. Head up, head up, uh, blackbirdmotor.com. Anyway, thanks guys, catch you next time. A few moments later. Guys, I want you to meet one of my dear friends, Tim Harney. He helped me build my cyber truck, my cyber car, cyber, oh my God, cyber bike. I can't speak. Daryl and, and, and he's visiting. Marriage. He's he's visiting us. Marriage is what brings us together. Look at the little coin. And I met T. Look at this. Because of Tim. This Tim is moved. Is an amazing fabricator, and he moved to California. He you're left us in New York. You're a you're a California.
and where the couple of those are. he showed up he's borrowing this serial killer car look at that look at that nice yeah. former police chevy <laughs> that thing has definitely murdered people before oh, and he's checking out does this come out the flashlight yeah Oh no, it didn't charge. Ugh, how cool is I this know. little thing? I know. Ugh, dead. Uh, ah! Tim, you need this car. You, lo you lose Dude, that. I wanted this car for forever. It drives great. Let's go for a drive. Look at the M4 seats. I know, did. You made it so much more comfortable. Ugh, fuck it. No, um, that, no one, like, there's three of us, and this is a two seater. I will follow you guys. No, I'll curl in the back like a small baby. I'll curl in the back like a small baby. So I know this is any, not part of the review of for this episode at all, but uh, Tim visited us. He's uh, visiting from California, and, uh, and I just then missed I him. pay child support towards it, and then a half 850, half <laughs> Tim Harney baby comes out, and then... Tim, Tim, just to wrap up this episode, what would you... It is, um... I, I think it's what... Every kid from the 2000s, or at least like if you were in your 20s in the 2000s, this is what you wanted. Y even if you didn't know that this is what you wanted, this was like the most understated supercar that BMW has ever made. It blows the Z8 out of the water, and it, the Alpina, whatever. This was just like sex appeal in subtlety. That's pretty good. We never uh, considered this car as a supercar. Well, it it's 100%. It is. It's a B12. That's what it's, they invented. It's a supercar. It, it intended it to be. Yeah. This was, this was the, I mean, the, this was their answer to, like, the 560 SELs. This was the, this, but it, like, blew it out of the water. And that, in terms of, like, how it aged, it has only gotten better. In terms of, like, the, the equivalent years, like, the 540, which was, like, you could find those in the, uh, the V10s were, like, they didn't age as well aesthetically as this. Like everything, this, even all the gauge clusters, look at that. Like the flip up headlights. Oh. I dare you to find the next year. Like, take any car and then add flip up lights, and it, you just increase the, the like aesthetic value tenfold. That is so true. So, if, would you say thumbs up, Tim, Tim Harney approved? I, I would say two thumbs up, my bum hole. No, two thumbs up. <laughs> I like his, like, uh, there. Yeah. Look at, look at this. This is this is like a, a German woman. She's angular, but still curvaceous and and like makes you kind of feel bad about yourself. Oh, it means today. Uh -huh. Yeah. Look I at did that. I still love a German woman, and she did make me feel bad about myself. Yeah. Sort of the that was sort of the appeal of loving a German woman at some point in my life. Yeah. Um, yeah. Ugh, look at this. And that, and look how intuitive it is. Put your hand out, boop. It's, there's no clunkiness. There's, it's just, everything is very intuitive. This is like Anton Senna, like redheaded stepchild. I know he, he was an NSX guy, but this is, this is like <laughs> that. And with these like modern seats, which seem to like match leather wise perfectly. Ugh, look at this. All right, All right. Tim, here you go. Say bye, everybody. Bye. I'll go in the back. No, 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 no. no. I'm getting in the back. Who won't fit? Who, who won't fit? You. you. Well, I'm then how are we going to do this? I'm drive. A... What? You drive. drive. I will fit in the back. No, no, no. I'm going to fit in the back. Oh, I'll drive. I, I'm a wee fella. It's fine. I'm good. Sit. Let's both sit in the back. I don't think it'll... I don't think this is going to work. Look at your four legs. We're not going too far. Oh, I'm good. Who's going to sit down? I'm just... <laughs> my foot's stuck. <laughs> go back in front. No, no, no. <laughs> just sit in the front. Ah, uh, my foot. Oh god. This is the stupidest thing we've ever done nope. just now. No, it makes sense. I could be your chauffeur in an 850. Come on, Dad. Okay. Oh my god. Why back there? This is so dead. If I have to come back there. This is not ideal.